Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and I'm self-help guru Adam Cleary, no maced. Coming up, he might be the man who pisses sweat, but Shane O'Mac is Kofi's biggest threat. My chosen transport mode is Pogo, and I've got a potentially leaked new SmackDown logo. WWE's most notable Mexican flirter, Alberto Del Rio, is back on his murder. <laughs> A female chicken, it'd be a hen, and I've got an update <laughs> on the perfect 10. This is the oh, news. Did you do the point? I only came for the point. This is, yeah, so the big oh, story bro. last night is that, you know how Kofi Kingston is the WWE champion? Mm -hmm. You're aware of that. Yeah. You caught that one. I, I cried when he yeah. was crowned WWE champion. Yeah, I remember champion. that. You would, yeah, you would, oh, and it was all, it was, it was really embarrassing. And everybody loves this uh -huh. because finally they've done something good and pure and honest and we like Kofi and he's being a relatively good champion despite what a list you've just done might say. Well, <sighs> obviously WWE wouldn't be doing their job if they weren't looking further down the line, how are they going to put somebody mm -hmm. else, you know, mm -hmm. could there be a story somewhere? You have to be thinking about the next champion, the next two champions, the next two or three champions. But, oh, wow, I can't believe I've got to be the one to tell you this. It looks like their positioning to be the next WWE champion, Shane McMahon. The same, the same Shane McMahon that you're thinking of, that one, uh, is in a report from WrestleVote, who, you know, it's just, it's just a rumour at this stage, but they were the account that correctly predicted that Mansoor would win the yeah. greatest Royal Rumble when nobody else had even an inkling the guy was going to be in the thing. So they've got a bit of previous in this regard. And they say that while it is just a rumour, Shane is probably the next in line for the big old belt. That Adam Wilborn. It's, it's the maddest story ever, isn't it? Like, is we, it? Is it, though? Well, it, it, I Surely mean, the important part of the story is we push past the fact that it's Shane O'Man, Shane O'Man to be WWE champion and realise that... This is very on brand for them at the minute. They're he going, is, after all, the best in the world. They are going full WCW at this rate. Is this their David Arquette moment, do you think? I think so, yeah. I, I just, I can't get over it, the fact that... I get it, look, whoever takes that belt off Kofi Kingston, if they're a heel, then it, they're going to get a huge amount of heat, whether it be Brock Lesnar or Kevin Owens or whoever. But even so, Shane McMahon... Really, out of that entire roster, they've got one of the best rosters ever in WWE's history, and they've gone, give it to the boss's son. I ask you, though, who on over the course of the last six or seven months is best, better positioned to do it? He just beat Roman Reigns at an illustrious international event. He was crowned best wrestler in the world at an illustrious international event. He's on a relatively good winning streak Won at Mania. Ring. Won at Mania. Won at Mania, yep. I ask you, if, Adam Wilson, if, if he, Kobe Kingston, who else? I'm not going to swear, but if he wins that belt through that god-awful triangle choke of his, that might be it for me. And I'm a real die-hard WWE fan. But if he does this around Kobe Kingston's head, and then, oh my God. Not happy with this. No! How real... I how realistic do you find the Well, like, like you say, we were sort of all ready and scoffed. And then, went, and then you said, no, they got the Mansoor thing right. And I went... Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're going to do it, aren't they? I think they might. They I, might. They might. They'll probably have a match and they'll, they'll come a point where we think, dear God, he's going to coast to coast Kofi. All coast I, to Kofi? Coast to Kofi. All I will say is, coast to Kofi, like cost to Kofi. <laughs> no, all I will say is that if you can't enjoy WWE for its banter ear at the minute and recognise that Shane, literally the least popular champion they could possibly have, beating Kofi, the most popular champion they've ever had. If you don't, in a way, want to see the fallout from that, if only for the memes, oh, then yeah. what are you even doing with WWE? Remember when we were heading towards WrestleMania and we were all pitching that potential four horsewomen holding all the gold at the end of Mania? Picture at the end of SummerSlam, Baron Corbin and Shane McMahon clinking their belts <laughs> together. And yeah, that's probably Vince's wet dream. Let's move on. Let's move on to SmackDown Live. Of course, lots of discussion about what's going to happen when SmackDown moves to Fox in October. And according to a tweet by Y2 Legend on Twitter, Good. there is potentially leaked new SmackDown logos for when they move what? to Fox. Would you like to see them? Well, I haven't seen them. He deliberately hasn't shown me these because he wants my honest reaction. Okay. Which I'm annoyed about because if I'd seen them in advance, I could have come up with a really pithy, yes. like, oh my God, it looks like... Here's a funny thing. Okay. Uh, I haven't got any of that, so it's just going to have to go purely off my face. Smackdown, this fall on Fox will look like this. 
Yeah. <laughs> Looks like clip art. <laughs> <laughs> so look at that. Oh my god. Oh, is it? Oh, it's an exclamation mark. Yes. That's very clever. Smack exclamation mark down. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. It's Adam. Some breaking Nicholas. news. It's breaking news. I'm well, in the middle. Stand in. I tried I try to come and time this just as you were talking about the Smackdown logo, so I hope I've got that right. Please don't tell me it's bollocks. It's There's there. a chance it might be fake. Uh oh. Uh, a D with an exclamation mark in it isn't a D, is it? No. Should we move on to our third story of the day? <laughs> Third, I can't do it. Third, third. third story of the day. Yes, uh, it's always nice to see uh, former WCPW ha alumni hashtag thriving, and that's, uh, that's true of Alberto Del Rio, mm. who we've not heard from in in a wee while, in a hot minute. It looks like he is about to set up. He's going to do his own AW, isn't he? Another one of these wow. ex WWE guys who's been like, do you know what? This is this is dreadful. This <laughs> I'm going to do my own. Alberto Del Rio is teaming up with Chavo Guerrero. Isn't that nice to go Random. set up their new wrestling promotion? And I wrote it down because I knew that I would get it wrong if I didn't. They're calling it Nation Lucha Libre. Do you know what that means? No. Nation Wrestling. Oh. That's good. And they're going to be doing their first show on July the 11th in Mexico City. And that is called La Batalia Inicial. Which, do you know what that means? The Battle Initial. No, because in Spanish you put the... It's I the initial battle. I did. It's I the did. initial battle. I did German at school. <laughs> Not Jesus. well. Jesus, right. Okay, uh, they've got some stars already on the card. Sorry, what was the title? Uh, La... Don't do this to me. La Batal... La Batal... La Batala. Do you have any Spanish viewers? La Batala Inicial. Which means? The initial battle. Right, got it. It's okay. I mean, it, as Spanish goes, it's one of the more translatable yeah. ones. Yeah. Um, they've got MVP on the card, Carlito on the card, Ricardo Rodriguez on the card, LAX on the card, Pentagon on the card, you presume Alberto and Chavo on the card, and Del Rio has teased his fans by saying that there will be additions from WWE. Now, Ooh. my personal take on that is that's a bit of mischief making because he knows a lot of people aren't happy. Like, oh, yeah. really? We do be getting lots of WWE stars and also because he knows that Moxley went to, went to, and then, mm. yeah. So I think he's just having a bit of fun with that one, but hey, you never know. We could get, I mean, it's not like Lucha House Party doing anything <laughs> that they wouldn't want to miss, is it? No, so, exactly. I, I like it. Look, any other opportunities, Why? we always say we always say this. When any, any other opportunities, Why do you like it? I'm getting to that. <laughs> any other opportunities for wrestlers outside of WWE is only going to be a good thing right now. Whenever you ask any former wrestlers about AEW or now for all these new promotions that are springing up, competition is the thing that they they feel is most important. Competition. So WWE need it the most, and these alternatives, whether it be run by Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks, or randomly Alberto Del Rio and randomly. Chavo Guerrero. Randomly. 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 Yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird combination of people, but the names on that list sound great, and if you can get some more in there, fine. Okay, if you can get Luchasaurus, that's me oh. uh, petitioning our bosses for a little trip to Mexico City. That sounds fantastic. Right, let's. Any more news? Yeah, one more. It centres around All Elite Wrestling and their newest signing, who is a perfect. 10. Yes, you probably would have guessed with his involvement I at the... finger football last night. That was a bit... I don't know what I did. You only like your jabs. Oh, you put... Oh. Yeah, you only do that. I did that. It really hurts. Uh, he, he may have guessed with his involvement in the Casino Battle Royal, but he wasn't officially signed at that point. But Sean Spears, formerly known, of course, as Ty Dillinger in the WWE, is now officially all elite. Good news. Good news for him. Yep, definitely. I think the roster's getting to the part now where their signings aren't like, oh my God, that's amazing. Because when they started, anybody they signed was amazing because they were a new mm -hmm. promotion. And then from there, they sort of upped the ante. They got Kenny in when we weren't sure where he was going to go. Jericho was obviously a huge coup. He was one of the first ones mm -hmm. to get in. And obviously Moxley being the headline grabbing in. But now it's like, you got to remember there's a TV product to run here. Not everybody can be in the main event. and Not everybody can be show-stealing, headline-grabbing. And to get somebody like Spears, or Dylan, whatever you want, you want it, whatever you're calling him these days, <laughs> in sort of the mid-card is a great sign of the strength they're going to yeah. have because he's, he's a recognisable name. He's a fantastic wrestler. He was comically underused with WWE. His latter-day NXT run that segued into the main roster, was he was hot then. Mm. He was a big deal. They could have done a lot with him, and hopefully... We'll all remember that Rumble entrance, of course, the first time he came out at number 10. I hated that he came out at 10, you know. Did you? I, I thought he should have done 11. Because everyone would have been like, oh, 10's going to be... Uh, oh, and then do it. <laughs> Just bait and switch. As, as, as we know, I'm a, I'm a better born entertainer Indeed. than anybody at WWE. But yeah, best of luck for him in there. I think he's going to do fantastically well in AEW. Well, let's move on to your Twitch questions. At what culture WWE? 
uh, if you want to send us them. I forgot about these. First question comes Ooh. from Ooh. Rick Master Flex. Rick Master Flex? Who says... To Mr. and Mrs. Master Flex, a son, Rick. Rick. Which WWE star do you think needs new entrance music? He suggests Baron Corbin. Oh, no, I like, I don't mind Baron Corbin's entrance music. Who needs new entrance music? Ooh. Who do you think? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm tempted to say Corbin, but, oh, I tell you who does. Lars Sullivan. It's awful. I can't even, I can't it's, even bring to mind it, Lars Sullivan. It's just like a plinky plonky piano and then like, it's awful. Goldberg. Because instead of that, but instead of that, it needs to just be, as he comes down once again, busted open yeah. through the door. Yeah. Uh, for second question today. No disrespect, Bill. <laughs> second question today comes from Dijon Ma. To <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ma, <laughs> a son, Dijon. Uh, he says, if WWE are going to continue with the Saudi thing, would it be a good idea for them to create a Middle East belt? And they can use that to give the prestige to the Saudi pay-per-views yeah. without wrecking the main belts. I mean, That's a great idea, right? I'll tell you how I would design how? that. I would make it green, yeah? right? And I would have a big palm tree on it, in like, sort of very similar to like the Universal title. But how would you but, like, win green. it? What I would do for the inaugural one is I would have like another like huge gimmick match, like a Royal Rumble or something. But, yeah, like, but you like, can't have a normal Royal no, Rumble. No, no, like on a scale they've never done it before, just to show the like illustrious nature of it. Then I would give it to somebody who has been sort of floating around the top of the car but never won the big one. So this sort of feels like a step for them, I but like at the that. same time gives the belt like a, a necessary level of... Um... Prestige. Yeah. I've got an idea. You call the match the bestest ever Royal Rumble. But seriously, do you think um, they, should, they, should, they should have them defending it depends. that belt? It'd be weird for them to have a belt that only gets defended every sort of six to mm. eight months under highly controversial circumstances. It's the opposite that, of the 24-7 yeah, championship. Like exactly. But I mean, people said this about the UK championship that like, they're going to have it. The idea with it initially was it was going to be seen on WWE programming mm -hmm. and see it on NXT. You maybe even see it on Raw and stuff. And they've not really, it's rarely defended on NXT. Mm. It's been on Raw once. And I don't even think it was on the line. No, he just came in and beat up Enzo Amore. And yet it worked really, really well. So I don't know if, if there is all this talk about WWE want to franchise out uh, their NXT product. Like yeah, you, the NXT UK was a bit of an experiment in that regard. They do want to do it in other places in the world. Uh, for the life of me, don't understand why they're not trying to do NXT... NXT like, Saudi. NXT Saudi or just NXT Middle East or just something like that because they know the audience is there. Yeah. They're getting paid a boatload of money. They could have their own stars come through. We've seen Mansoor. Yeah, really, really huge good. pop, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, no is my answer. Final question today comes from Lynn. Lynn says... Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> a daughter. Lynn. Lynn. If you were in control, how would you save the women's tag division at this point? <laughs> Literally never been in control of my entire life. <laughs> I've, I've actually got an idea for this. Because, right, so you know the first Women's Royal Rumble? Yes. How they grossly inflated the women's division just so they could get 30 women sort of mm -hmm, in mm -hmm, one mm -hmm. match. And then so many of them have been left with nothing to do. And even the ones that they do push get forgotten about and then there's just this, that and the other. The women's tag division was supposed to save that, right? So, you've got Velocity. We well, used to have it. You've got main event. <laughs> yeah. You have an entire network full of programming that people can watch at their convenience. It doesn't matter if anybody watches it because you get everyone's getting their nine ninety nine anyway. Mm -hmm. So you can just produce programming. If we've got two or five live, because the cruiserweights are a division that have their own belts, mm -hmm. why don't we have a weekly women's Ooh, show? I like that. I really like, I don't, that. like you can do. You don't have to put everybody on it. Obviously, you keep your Beckys, your Charlotte, your people at the top of the card. They don't, they don't have to be on it, if at all. But you get to defend the women's tag team title on it all the time. You get to showcase all the women who can't get on TV mm -hmm. for no apparent reason. You can have all kinds of different matches. You have your own little storylines running through it. Exactly the same thing you do with 205 Live, which is critically acclaimed, but has a small audience. Yeah, and you could have... No reason you can't do that with the women's division. You could have, like, new up-and-comers facing sort of legends like Natalia or something. She's not got nothing to do at the moment. Yeah. Just have her on. I really like that. I'm not that I'm saying. Yeah, I, I don't know why anyone is saying that the women's tag tag team titles are, aren't good at the moment. In fact, I'd say they are iconic. So would I. I'm, I wouldn't even prefer that. It's just that just always no. in the pipeline. I just think they've got, I mean, I'd say they've got more women than they've got cruiserweights. Yeah. And the women hardly get any time on TV at the minute. So and there's no word on Evolution 2 either. Give them Give them, a, give them a weekly show. Why not? Don't, I know, I've said, presented this to people before and they were like, yeah, but then you take them off TV and you bury them. No, don't cut any of their TV time for this. Give them the same TV time. But just the people you aren't going to use, the people who are just hanging about, 
let them do I even if it's you know recorded before mm -hmm. recorded performance center like record it at full sale like it doesn't matter just just do it be good you've got a lot of talented women there use them right let's move on to today's and finally and finally we are proud to announce possibly the best pay-per-view since Stomping Grounds is slowly being put together here at What Culture Wrestling. You see, you may have seen on Twitter last night, Sammy Callahan is now going after Simon Miller, joining legends like Tama Tonga. Oh, yeah, Chris Cyborgs after your Chris Cy blood, Chris <laughs> Cyborg tweeted last night. Someone, I can't remember who it was, I do apologize, but Chris Cyborg tweeted. To Mr. and Mrs. Someone, I do apologize. <laughs> Someone tweeted after um, Sammy was sort of calling out uh, si Simon. Uh, oh yeah, get get Phil involved in it because obviously he's been involved in all the Sammy Callahan and stuff and wrestle. the Tamatonga stuff, and he can actually wrestle. Uh, and then someone's like, oh yeah, what about Chris Cyborg and Adam Wilborn? And she tweeted, uh, we're gonna fight to the death. Yes. Well, she said it doesn't have to be a death match, but, but somebody has to die. Yeah. So it's been you, nice. It's been specific. it's been nice knowing you. To be fair, you've this got, card's you've shaping got up an though. Inch on it. Yeah, you've got a bit of an. You've got. You have got. A, I would say possibly even a reach advantage with these. Whatever these are. <laughs> That's still, still not hopeful. So the card is what Sammy Callahan and Tammy Tong. Tammy Tongo. Timmy Timmy Tango. Timmy Tango. Sammy Callahan versus is, Simon uh, Miller and Phil Chambers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andy Murray could do a run on that one because him and Sammy have had crosswords. Okay. Um, we could have you versus Jack Whitehall. Yep. I mean, be a 30 minute squash and me be yeah. piss out of him, but that's about it. And you could have me versus Chris Cyborg. Let us know who else you think in the office should fight professional wrestlers. And, do you uh, know what it is, right? I read that Sammy Callahan thing. He's like, it's not just Simon Miller. It's all of what culture WWE. Because they talk smack in all the videos and their articles. Then they're nice to your face, mm. right? I could put that to bed right now. I would never be nice to his face because I wouldn't recognise him in the street if he sat on me. I'd be like, oh, he's just some weirdo drinking a can of Monster Energy crossing the road now. But of course, he does watch the channel, so if he asked for a selfie, I would give it to him. Fans first forever. Let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories in the comment section below. Oh, I don't. <laughs> and don't forget, don't forget to like, share, Ugh. and subscribe. And you can send us Twitter questions at WhatCultureWWE. Watch you there. You can follow both of us. You can follow him at... Andy H. Murray. The H stands for... Hurt me, Sammy Callahan. <laughs> you can follow me at Adam Wilborn. You can also follow him at Adam Cleary, C-L-E-R-Y. You can follow us all at What Culture WWE. My thanks to Adam Cleary and to Adam Nicholas. And thank you for watching. We will see you soon.